In the heart of a forgotten industrial district lay an old, decommissioned factory, now repurposed as a storage facility. The place had a notorious reputation for strange occurrences, and many of the local workers refused to take the night shift, whispering of unsettling noises and fleeting shadows that roamed the vast, cluttered halls after dark. Eager to prove himself and in need of extra cash, a young security guard named Marcus accepted the night shift position. On his first night, armed with nothing but a flashlight and a set of keys, Marcus began his patrol through the cold, echoing corridors filled with rows of dusty shelves and forgotten relics of the factory's past. As the night deepened, Marcus felt an eerie sensation of being watched. He dismissed it as nerves, attributing the faint, inexplicable noises he heard to the settling of an old building. However, when he reached the heart of the factory, where the old machinery lay silent and draped in shadows, his flashlight flickered and died, plunging him into darkness. Feeling a sudden chill, Marcus fumbled for his backup light, his breaths quickening as the silence grew oppressive, heavy with anticipation. When the beam of his spare flashlight pierced the darkness, he caught a glimpse of something moving, a fleeting shadow, unnaturally swift and silent, disappearing between the machinery. Heart pounding, Marcus convinced himself it was just a trick of light. Perhaps a rat or bird disturbed by his presence. But as he continued his patrol, he couldn't shake the feeling of dread that clung to him like the cobwebs draping the old equipment. Reaching a section of the factory that had been sealed off for years, Marcus found the door ajar, the lock broken. Inside, the air was thick with dust, and the smell of decay was overpowering. His flashlight illuminated a scene untouched by time. A workstation with old, rusted tools, and in the center, a large, tarp-covered object that seemed out of place. As Marcus approached, drawn by a mix of curiosity and fear, temperature dropped sharply, his breath visible in the air. He reached out to pull back the tarp, but before he could touch it, a sudden sound made him freeze. A soft, dragging step behind him, like someone or something moving in the darkness. Turning slowly, his flashlight trembling in his hand, Marcus scanned the room. Nothing, but he felt a presence, an oppressive force that seemed to bear down on him, filling the air with palpable malice. The silence was broken again by the sound. Closer now, a soft, mocking laughter that echoed off the walls, sending a shiver down his spine. Realizing the danger, Marcus decided to flee back to the security office where he could lock himself in and call for help. But as he turned to leave, the light from his flashlight flickered over the tarp, revealing a corner that had been pulled back, exposing a glimpse of what lay beneath. Not machinery or equipment, but something far more disturbing. Something that should not be in a factory. Something that stared back at him with hollow, empty eyes. As fear gripped his heart, Marcus heard the dragging step again, this time right behind him. Accompanied by a cold breath on his neck, Marcus spun around, his flashlight beam cutting through the darkness to reveal nothing but the empty room. The laughter grew louder, echoing around him, as if coming from every direction. Panicked, he sprinted toward the exit. 
the sound of his own footsteps drowned out by the chilling laughter and the ever-nearing drag of footsteps behind him. As he ran, the factory seemed to warp and extend before him, corridors stretching into infinity, doors leading to twisted mazes of machinery and shadow. The once familiar layout of the factory became a labyrinthine nightmare, with Marcus desperately navigating the shifting passages, his mind racing to escape the unseen terror. The building itself appeared to be alive, with walls groaning and floors shifting. Trying to disorient him further, Marcus stumbled into a room he didn't recognize, filled with rows of mannequins, their blank faces and outstretched arms casting grotesque shadows in the flickering light of his flashlight. Their positions seemed unnaturally posed, as if frozen in the midst of some macabre dance. Catching his breath, Marcus realized the laughter had ceased, replaced by a suffocating silence that pressed in on him. The air was cold, filled with the stench of decay, and something else, something metallic and sharp. His flashlight flickered again, and in the brief moments of darkness between the flickers, he saw the mannequins seemed to move, their positions subtly changing, edging closer to him each time the light returned. Heart racing, Marcus backed away, bumping into a table that hadn't been there before. On it lay an assortment of old, rusted factory tools and faded photographs depicting the factory in its operational days. But among the benign images, one photo stood out, a black and white picture of the factory workers standing in front of the machinery, their eyes scratched out. And in the background, a figure that didn't belong, shrouded in darkness, its features blurred, but its intent malevolently clear. As Marcus examined the photo, the temperature plummeted further, his breath misting in the air. A sudden clatter echoed as one of the mannequins toppled over, its head rolling towards him, stopping with its blank face staring up at him. The silence was then shattered by a cacophony of whispers, dozens of voices speaking in unison, too quick to understand, their tone desperate and warning. The flashlight began to dim its dying light pulsating like a heartbeat, throwing distorted shadows across the walls. The whispers grew louder, more insistent, as if urging Marcus to listen, to understand. And then, as sudden understanding dawned on him, the whispers fell silent, replaced by the sound of heavy, dragging footsteps approaching the room. With the flashlight's light now barely more than a glow, Marcus looked up to see the door slowly creak open, revealing the darkened corridor beyond. The dragging footsteps stopped at the threshold, and a figure loomed in the doorway, its form obscured by darkness, save for two gleaming points of light where its eyes should be. Marcus trapped between the encroaching mannequins and the sinister figure, realized that the factory's secrets were more horrific and profound than he could have imagined. The night shift was not just a job. It was a test, a journey into the heart of darkness that the factory harbored within its decaying walls. The figure stepped forward into the room, the light revealing nothing but tattered clothes hanging off a skeletal frame, its face obscured by shadows, yet those gleaming eyes fixed unblinkingly on Marcus. The air around the figure seemed to warp and shiver, as if it was a tear in the very fabric of reality, a gap 
through which unspeakable horrors could slip. Marcus, now cornered, felt a deep, primal fear take hold. The figure advanced slowly, each step deliberate, echoing in the silent room filled with the silent, watching mannequins. As it moved, the shadows seemed to cling to it, stretching and twisting across the walls and ceiling, enveloping the room in darkness. In a desperate bid for escape, Marcus threw the flashlight at the figure, and for a moment, when the light hit its face, the shadows dissipated, revealing a glimpse of the true horror beneath. A visage not just decayed, but wrong, as if it was a crude imitation of human features, stitched together from darkness and malice. The flashlight flickered out upon impact, and the room plunged into darkness. The only sound, Marcus's heavy breathing, and the slow, relentless drag of the figure's approach. In the pitch black, Marcus scrambled away, his hands finding the cold, metal handles of the factory tools on the table. Without thinking, he grabbed one, wielding it like a weapon. Whispers filled the room again, now clear and commanding, urging Marcus to act. They guided him, forming a narrative of the factory's past, of rituals and sacrifices made in the shadow of machinery, to appease something ancient and hungry something that the figure represented, or perhaps contained. Marcus, guided by the whispers, swung the tool in a wide arc, striking where he guessed the figure would be. There was a sound like the shattering of glass, and the room was suddenly flooded with light, as if the darkness itself had broken, revealing the factory as it once was clean and operational, filled with workers going about their tasks. The figure was gone, but the factory was alive with echoes of the past, playing out scenes of daily life decades ago. Marcus, caught in the temporal flux, watched as the scenes sped up, showing years passing in moments. The decline of the factory the slow seep of darkness as it was abandoned, and the encroachment of something otherworldly into the reality of the building. He realized that the factory was a nexus, a point where different realities and times intersected, manipulated by the entity that the figure represented. The workers, the mannequins, and even the building itself were puppets enacting a story written in the shadows of the factory's past. As Marcus navigated through these shifting scenes, trying to find his way back to his own time and reality, the factory seemed to resist, its narrative trying to ensnare him, to make him a part of its eternal cycle of replayed history and horror. Each doorway led to another time, another scene, each more disturbing and surreal than the last. Marcus's journey through the factory became a journey through its soul, a maelstrom of past atrocities, lost hopes, and the dark, insatiable hunger of the entity that fed on them. He realized that to escape, to return the factory to normality, he would need to confront not just the entity, but the history of the building itself, to untangle the reality from the nightmare it had become. The story continues with Marcus trapped in this temporal labyrinth, searching for a way to end the cycle, to bring light to the dark corners of the factory and to face the entity that lurked in the shadows of its history, shaping its narrative of horror. Marcus navigated through the temporal chaos, 
each step taking him deeper into the factory's haunted past. He witnessed the transition of the factory from a bustling center of industry to a desolate shell, each era marked by a layer of the building's accumulated pain and darkness. The entity, a sentinel of sorrow, seemed to feed on the decay and despair, growing stronger as the factory fell into ruin. As he moved through these eras, Marcus encountered spirits of the past workers, some aware of their spectral nature, others trapped in a loop of their final moments. Among them, he found allies, lost souls who had glimpsed the truth of their situation and sought to break free from the entity's grasp. They shared their stories with Marcus, offering pieces of the puzzle that was the factory's curse. One spirit, a former foreman named Gerald, revealed the origin of the darkness. Decades ago, a cult had infiltrated the factory, using its bowels for rituals that thinned the barriers between worlds, inviting something ancient and malevolent to seep into the building's foundations. This entity, Gerald explained, had not just haunted the factory, but had woven itself into the fabric of its existence, becoming part of its very structure. Guided by Gerald and the other spirits, Marcus learned that to confront the entity and restore the natural flow of time, he needed to locate the ritual site and destroy it, severing the connection between the factory and the dark forces feeding on it. His journey took him to the oldest part of the factory, a section long forgotten and buried under layers of decay, where the air was thick with the residue of dark energies. The deeper he ventured, the more the factory's reality twisted, corridors spiraling into impossible geometries and time flowing in erratic currents. Marcus found himself not just fighting to navigate the physical space, but also struggling against the pull of the entity's influence, trying to drag his mind into madness. In this nightmarish landscape, Marcus discovered the heart of the factory's darkness, an underground chamber hidden beneath the factory floor where the cult had conducted their rituals. The room was a vortex of dark energy, walls etched with runes glowing with an eerie light. And in the center, a pit leading into an abyss that pulsed with the entity's power. As Marcus approached the pit, the entity manifested its form a swirling mass of shadows and distorted faces, a congregation of all the souls it had consumed. It spoke in a voice like the grinding of gears and the wail of the bereft, a sound that threatened to tear Marcus's mind apart. It offered him a place at its side, promising him power and immortality in exchange for his allegiance. Resisting the entity's temptations, Marcus prepared for a confrontation. Armed with the knowledge and artifacts he had gathered from the spirits and the hidden corners of the factory, the battle that ensued was not just physical, but a clash of wills. As Marcus fought to anchor his mind and reality against the entity's onslaught of visions, and distortions. As Marcus chanted the counter ritual, learned from the whispers of the past and the guidance of the spirits, the factory began to shake, the very building rebelling against the severing of its dark heart. The entity, writhing in the grip of the ritual's power, lashed out, its shadows striking like serpents. Each touch 
a searing pain in Marcus's mind. The struggle reached its peak as Marcus completed the ritual, the factory's corrupted reality peeling away, revealing glimpses of other times, other possibilities, a web of potential histories, all converging on the chamber. With a final, desperate effort, Marcus drove the entity back into the abyss, the runes fading as the connection was severed, the pit sealing with a thunderous roar. The factory fell silent, its oppressive atmosphere lifting, replaced by the stillness of a place finally at peace. Marcus, exhausted and wounded but triumphant, found himself standing in the now benign chamber, the echoes of the past fading like a bad dream in the morning light. But as he made his way out of the factory, the first rays of dawn breaking over the horizon, Marcus felt the weight of the night's events, a burden he would carry with him. The factory, now just a building, stood silent. Its legacy of darkness ended, but the memory of what had transpired would linger. A cautionary tale of the thin line between reality and nightmare, waiting in the shadows for the unwary or the curious to stumble upon. As Marcus exited the factory, the world outside seemed unnaturally bright and still as if in stark contrast to the darkness he had just escaped. The silence of the early morning was a balm to his frayed nerves, yet the tranquility was tinged with an underlying tension, a sense that the battle inside the factory was but a part of a larger, unseen war. Walking away from the now dormant building, Marcus couldn't shake the feeling that the entity vanished, had left a mark on him, a shadowy imprint on his soul. He felt its presence lurking at the edges of his consciousness, biding its time, waiting for a moment of weakness to assert itself. The city around him began to wake, the first hints of daily life creeping into the streets, but Marcus felt detached, as if he was walking through a dream. People passed by, oblivious to the night's ordeal and the thin veil between their world and the darkness that hungered just beyond their perception. Driven by a need to understand what had happened and to ensure that the entity was truly contained, Marcus sought out the history of the factory and the land it stood on. His research led him to old newspaper archives, forgotten records, and tales of the local area, piecing together a mosaic of tragedies, accidents, and unexplained events that all pointed back to the factory and its dark influence. He discovered that the factory had been built on the site of an older structure one with its own sordid history of death and misery. Each iteration of the building seemed to serve as a beacon for suffering, drawing in pain and despair like a well of darkness. The entity, it appeared, was tied not just to the factory, but to the land itself, a malignant growth that had been cut back but not eradicated. As Marcus delved deeper into the mystery, he became aware of a network of similar sites across the city and beyond, each with its own history of darkness and horror. It dawned on him that the factory was merely a node in a larger pattern, a part of a web of places steeped in suffering and bound by unseen threads a central, insidious will. Determined to confront and end the cycle of darkness, Marcus set out 
to trace the web to its source. His journey took him to abandoned buildings, ancient ruins, and forgotten places hidden in plain sight, each revealing a part of the story of a centuries-old curse, a pact made with entities from beyond the veil, promising power and immortality in exchange for blood and souls. As Marcus unraveled the threads of the curse, he encountered others who had sensed the darkness, each touched by it in different ways. A librarian haunted by premonitions, a detective chasing cases that led nowhere, and a medium tormented by visions of the abyss. Together, they formed a reluctant alliance, pooling their knowledge and resources to trace the curse to its origin. Their quest led them through the underbelly of the city and into the depths of the unknown, each step revealing the scale of the corruption and the depth of the entity's influence. They uncovered a cult that had survived through the ages, its members influential figures who maintained the curse, feeding the entity with the city's pain and suffering to gain eldritch power. As Marcus and his allies drew closer to the heart of the cult's power, the boundaries between reality and nightmare thinned, their path fraught with dangers both physical and ethereal. The cult, aware of their actions, sought to stop them with both mundane and supernatural threats, unleashing twisted creatures and malevolent spirits to halt their progress. The story weaving through layers of mystery and horror, builds towards a climax that promises to reveal the dark heart of the curse and the true nature of the entity. Marcus and his companions, each carrying their own scars and burdens, prepare to face the cult and its unearthly patron in a battle that will determine the fate of their souls and the very fabric of reality, setting the stage for a confrontation that could either end the cycle of darkness or condemn them to its depths forever. The group's journey into the heart of the cult's domain was a descent into a world where the lines between the physical and the supernatural became increasingly blurred, buildings twisted into grotesque forms, defying the laws of physics and streets led in impossible directions, as if the city itself had become a living entity. Its architecture, an ever-changing maze designed to confound and trap them. Marcus, the librarian, the detective, and the medium each faced their own nightmares made manifest challenges tailored to their fears and pasts, testing their resolve and sanity. The librarian, with her vast knowledge, deciphered cryptic clues hidden in the city's layout, revealing paths through the chaos. The detective, with his experience in navigating the city's darker corners, confronted echoes of unsolved cases and victims seeking justice. The medium, sensitive to the spiritual disturbances, guided them through haunted locales, her visions a beacon in the darkness. As they moved closer to the cult's inner sanctum, the manifestations of the entity became more direct and dangerous. Shadowy figures stalked them, slipping through cracks in reality, and the air was thick the oppressive weight of watching eyes. The city around them seemed to pulse with a dark rhythm, like the heartbeat of some vast, slumbering beast. In this environment, where every shadow concealed a threat and each step could lead into a trap, the group's bond 
was their greatest strength. Their combined skills peeled back layers of deception and history, exposing the roots of the curse that had entwined itself through the city's foundation. They uncovered ancient structures hidden beneath modern facades, secret chambers where the cult performed their rites, and libraries containing forbidden tomes that chronicled the entity's arrival in our realm. The texts spoke of a dark pact made in the city's infancy, where power was granted in exchange for sacrifices to the entity, a cycle of bloodshed and terror that had perpetuated through the centuries. The culmination of their search led them to a concealed underground temple, the epicenter of the cult's power, where the fabric of reality was thin and the barrier to the entity's realm was weakest. Here, the cultists gathered, their ranks filled with influential figures masked in shadow, conducting a ritual that channeled the city's pain and fear into the abyss feeding the entity and maintaining the curse. As Marcus and his allies prepared to confront the cult and disrupt the ritual, they understood that this battle was not just for their own lives, but for the soul of the city. The ritual in progress was more than a mere offering. It was a summoning, an attempt to bring the entity fully into their world, to grant it physical form and unrestrained power. The confrontation that ensued was both a physical skirmish and a psychic struggle. As the group fought against the cultists and their summoned horrors while resisting the entity's mental assaults, which sought to turn their fears against them, to divide and conquer them from within. As the battle reached its peak, with the forces of darkness pressing in and the ritual nearing completion, Marcus and his companions rallied, their wills fortified by the knowledge of. In the aftermath of the temple's collapse and the thwarting of the ritual, the city seemed to breathe a sigh of relief, its streets lighter its air fresher, but for Marcus and his companions, the world had changed irrevocably. They had glimpsed the machinery of reality, the cogs of darkness that turned beneath the surface of their everyday lives, and they could not unsee the shadows that lurked in the corners of their vision. The group, now bound by their shared experiences, formed a pact to guard against the darkness, to investigate and counter the threats from beyond the veil. They set up a base of operations in the city, a place filled with relics and tomes they had salvaged from their journey, a library of the arcane and the occult. As days passed into weeks, the group delved deeper into the study of the supernatural their research guided by the clues and artifacts they had gathered. They learned of other entities, each with its own agenda and followers, and of the networks of power and influence that these beings had cultivated over centuries. Their investigations led them to intersections of ley lines, ancient burial sites, and locations of historical tragedies each a potential hotspot for supernatural activity. They encountered other groups and individuals, some allies in the fight against darkness, others adversaries or worshipers of the entities they sought to oppose. The city, they discovered, was a battleground for forces beyond human comprehension. Its history, a tapestry woven with threads of light and darkness. Each case they undertook peeled back another layer of this hidden world, revealing the complex interplay of fate and free in the shadows of the world. 
in the wake of their victory at the mansion, Marcus and his team solidified their commitment to defending the city and the world against the encroaching darkness. They became beacons of hope in a hidden war, a secret line of defense against forces that sought to tear through the fabric of reality. As months passed, they encountered and neutralized threats of increasing severity and complexity, each victory bringing them closer as a team, each challenge strengthening their resolve. They were no longer just individuals brought together by circumstance. They had become a family, bound by shared purpose and mutual trust. The final confrontation came when the entity, the dark force they had encountered in the factory and battled in the mansion, found a new way to breach the world. This time, it was more subtle, more insidious, infiltrating the minds of people throughout the city, turning them into vessels of its will. Marcus and his team faced their greatest challenge yet, not just a physical enemy to confront, but a psychological warfare that tested their own mental fortitude and the strength of their bond. The city they sought to protect became a labyrinth of paranoia and danger, with friends turning into foes and trust becoming a scarce commodity. The climax of their battle took place in the heart of the city, where the entity had anchored itself, drawing on the fears and nightmares of the populace to manifest fully. Marcus and his companions, using all their skills, knowledge, and the bonds they had formed, confronted the entity in a showdown that transcended the physical plane. A battle of wills fought in the realm of the mind and spirit, utilizing a ritual that combined their powers and the essence of all the artifacts they had gathered. They managed to encapsulate the entity in a prison of its own making, a mirror reflecting its endless hunger and darkness back upon itself, trapping it in an eternal loop. As the entity was sealed away, the darkness that had spread across the city receded like a tide, and the people freed from its influence returned to normal, unaware of how close they had come to being consumed by the abyss. The aftermath of the battle saw Marcus and his team emerging as unsung heroes, their deeds known only to those who could comprehend the true nature of the world's hidden darkness. They continued their vigil, knowing that while they had won a significant victory, the war against the darkness was far from over. Their lives became a testament to the belief that even in the face of overwhelming darkness, the light of hope, unity, and courage could prevail. The story concludes with them standing watch over the city, guardians against the night. Their legacy, a promise, that in the darkness, there will always be those who will stand against it, who will fight for the light, even when the battle seems unending. <laughs>